This video is brought to you by Zavi. Simply follow the link on screen or click the link in the description of this video to head over to the Zavi website and redeem our awesome discount codes to get money off of your favourite Doctor Who TV movie and gaming merchandise. Follow the link and use the Whoaddicts 20 for 20% off all clothing merch or use the Whoaddicts 10 for 10% off anything and everything on the Zavi website. Enjoy the video. The Cyber Wars were a group of conflicts spread throughout the 22nd, 23rd, 24th and 25th centuries, as well as into the far future. They were a never-ending group of battles between the Human Empire and the Cyber Empire, as they fought throughout the universe. The Cyber Wars are a group of battles which have been referenced multiple times throughout Doctor Who in both the classic and modern eras being mentioned in the likes of Revenge of the Cybermen, Nightmare and Silver, the Timeless Children, with an entire Cyber Legion briefly appearing in A Good Man Goes to War. An entire episode or story has never been dedicated to the Cyber Wars, but there is a substantial amount of information out there and enough references within the Doctor Who media which allow us to piece together some type of a picture of what happened during them. We already have covered the story of the Cybermen separately on this channel, so please check that out if you haven't already, as it was an incredibly difficult effort to align both the Cybermen's timeline and lineage with Doctor Who itself, and the many different appearances and their many different forms throughout the Cyber Wars. Maybe after watching both of these videos, you could piece the two together. Nevertheless, let's try and put this puzzle together and do our best to document the story of the Cyber Wars. The first battle within the Cyber Wars was the Vorgan War, which took place in the 22nd century, and this was a battle between the Cyber Nomads and the Vorgans. The Cyber Nomads were a subspecies of the Cybermen who were identified by the archivist Hegelia, who were respective researchers at that time on Mondas. Now, it's important that we start by explaining the different type of cyber groups who split off from the original species who originated on Mondas. The original Cybermen split into two groups initially, the first being the Cyber Mondans and the second being the Cyber Faction. The Cyber Mondans were inhabitants of Mondas who wished to maintain some biological form whereas the Cyber Faction preferred to fully embrace their cybernetics. The Cyber Faction then split into three further splinter groups, the first being the original Cyber Faction who inhabited Planet 14, the second being the Cyber Telosians who inhabited Telos, and the Cyber Nomads who broke away to the galaxy of Mutter's Spiral. And it was this group of Cyber Nomads who fought in the first war with the Vorgans. The Vorgans were humanoids from the planet Vorga, who of course did appear in Revenge of the Cybermen. Their home planet was made of gold, and it was because of this that they became deadly enemies of the Cyber Nomads. The Vorgan War was believed to have took place somewhere in and around the year 2150 through to the year 2191 where we believe the Cyber Nomads were defeated by the Vorgans and were presumed to be extinct by the end of the 22nd century. However, this wasn't quite the last that we'd seen of them and their battles with each other, which we'll get onto later in the video. The events of the Vorgan War did have a huge number of knock-on effects on the surrounding planets including Earth, which following this, as well as the Dalek invasion of Earth which happened in the same century, were left in financial ruin.
The second of the cyber wars was known to be the Great Cyber War, which took place within Mutter's Spiral like the Vorgan War did. This war was between the Cybermen as a species and humanity. Now, not much detail is known of the war itself, but humanity ultimately defeated the Cybermen via the use of glitter guns. And these were a weapon which was especially developed by the Cybermen's enemies following the discovery of their weakness to gold during their previous war with the Vorgans. The glitter gun would fire gold dust particles as well as molten gold into the chests of the Cybermen, congesting their respiration systems and suffocating them to death. The Vorgans supplied the humans with these weapons, and among discovering this, the Cybermen again attempted to destroy Vorga and its people, but it failed once more. The Cyber Leader believed that without the help of the Vorgans, humanity wouldn't have stood a chance against the Cybermen, and victory for them would have been inevitable. The Master later sympathised with the Cybermen, referencing what happened to them as an atrocity. Whereas the Vorgan War only resulted in the extinction of the Cyber Nomads as a splinter group in their own, the Great Cyber War almost wiped out the entirety of the Cyber Race, with the Cyber Nomads and especially the more primitive Cyber Mondans near enough extinct. Only the group known as the Cyber Telosians remained as humanity launched its final assault on their own planet of Telos. The planet was overrun by Earth's forces and bombarded, causing whatever was left of the Cybermen's race to retreat across the galaxy. A large Cyber fleet did escape the assault on Telos, however, and fled to the dwarf planet in the Kuiper Belt, which was a belt of rocks and asteroids in the orbit of Neptune. Here, they waited in hiding for 10 years, until the Great Cyber War came to its end. They planned to eventually travel back in time to the previous bombardment on Telos, which of course forced them to flee in the first place. With the idea to try and stop it from happening, they also planned on defeating the humans and rewriting the battle completely. This was until the second Doctor's companion Zoe and Findle took over the Super Controller's mind, forcing the last of the Cyber Fleet and its ships to crash into the planet, destroying them all in the process. It is believed that this was indeed the final act of the Great Cyber War, and the end of the Cyber Empire. Despite the Cybermen now seemingly extinct, the Sixth Doctor wasn't so sure, as he once referenced that there may be a number of several lost Cyber fleets hidden in regions throughout the galaxy, such as the Orion Nebula, which we will get to shortly, the Vega System and the Medillion Cluster, and that remnants of them may still be kept within collections and museums. Fast forwarding a couple of hundred years, it was towards the end of the 25th century when we return to the Vorgan War, as three centuries after the initial conflict, a small isolated group of cyber nomads re-emerged, and they were led by the cyber leader to get their revenge on the Vorgans by destroying their planet once and for all. Unfortunately for them, this group of cyber nomads were defeated by the fourth Doctor, Harry Sullivan and Sarah Jane Smith. It was hypothesised that another small group of cyber nomads may have found their way back to Telos, discovering some cyber tombs beneath the planet, which contained sleeping cyber Telosians. It is believed that these two groups together banded up together and secretly rebuilt the cyber race from the depths of the planet. Fast forward to the mid 26th century and a different war was waging in the universe, the Orion War. 
which initially had nothing to do with the Cybermen and was a battle between the Orion androids and the Human Empire. By the 26th century, the Orion androids were well integrated into human society, but grew frustrated with how they were trapped by the human race. Because of this, they decided to leave Earth and head back to the Orion system, which was relatively empty at the time. They set up their own government, only taking in humans if they'd accept living under the android rule, which didn't go down well with the humans. The Earth Empire saw this as a violation of sentient rights and attacked the Orion androids, starting what was known as the Orion War. This war raged on for around eight years before reaching a stalemate. In an effort to break the stalemate, the Earth military sent an agent to the Garazon system, where they'd located a derelict cyber star destroyer which was left abandoned from the Great Cyber War, and it contained cyber technology which could give them the advantage. However, the agent which was sent by the humans was in fact a double agent, whose intentions were solely to learn the secrets of cyber conversion which they could then use on the human prisoners of war. Luckily, the Eighth Doctor managed to intervene, convincing the agent to leave the technology alone before destroying the cyber destroyer in an ion storm. As it had been centuries since the Great Cyber War, many humans didn't recognise the Cybermen, but following their rebuild in the depths of Telos, the word spread of the Cybermen's return, and because of this, various governments recognised the species and that they'd somehow survived, and they all signed a pact to unite with one another against the reborn race of Cybermen, creating what was known as the Alliance. The Cybermen attempted to prevent this and launch an attack on Earth. They firstly tried to destroy Earth with a cyber bomb before attempting to crash a human freighter into the planet itself. But of course, this was stopped by the Fifth Doctor when Adric sacrificed himself, taking the Cybermen down with him. And having lost their cyber leader, the cyber fleet dispersed into the universe. Now it's a mystery what happened to the Cybermen after this, but many battles between the humans and the Cybermen did continue as the fight began to spread throughout the galaxy. It is believed that the Cybermen were eventually overcome as they were again forced to flee from their main base on Telos, with their cyber control destroyed as well as all the Cybermen which were left on the planet. For the first time in over 400 years, the conflict and the fighting finally stopped, and the Cybermen had completely vanished, or so you'd thought. The remaining Cybermen, who somehow had managed to survive, decided that after the loss of both Mondas and now Telos, they needed another planet to colonise and populate themselves in secret, and that they wanted to colonise what they would call New Mondas. So, the Cybermen stepped into the shadows and went about their business without anybody else's knowledge. And by the 40th century, after not being seen in what had been thousands of years, they were declared once again to be extinct. Between the 40th and 50th century, the Cybermen built and built and built, before coming back with a bang. And by the 52nd century, a fully-fledged Cyber Legion emerged from the shadows, roaming the skies to become one of the most powerful forces in the universe. The Legions were all connected by the Cyber Iad, a shared Cybermen consciousness which contained all knowledge of every working and operating Cyberman at any level. The Cyber Legions decided to enter the Tiberian Galaxy, with the aim of taking it over as their own. The Tiberian, or Tiberian Galaxy, however you want to pronounce it, was known to contain a million star systems, a hundred million worlds, and a billion trillion inhabitants. And the Cybermen saw this as the perfect galaxy to conquer and claim as their own to house their forever growing Cyber Empire. In an attempt to take over this galaxy, they kicked off the Third Cyber War. During the early years of what was now the Third Cyber War, the Second Doctor tried to step in, 
and he once prevented hundreds of Cybermats from attacking a space station by luring them away with his recorder. Throughout this war, the Cybermen continually upgraded themselves to overcome any foreseen weaknesses that could be exploited by the enemy, learning from mistakes that they'd suffered before. And in the end, due to the sheer size of the Cyber Legion, the huge number of planets that were at stake, and the vast amount of people whose lives were at risk, the human empire could only see one outcome, and one way which they could stop the Cybermen from taking over. One that was very akin, in fact, to the Time War itself. And that was to sacrifice the entire galaxy, destroying it with one gigantic explosion. And that is exactly what the humans did. They blew up the galaxy, decimating all Cybermen in the process as well as near enough all the planets and all life, leaving a gaping black hole in space, and ending yet another destructive segment of the Cyber Wars. Despite this, a few small planets were left in ruin, but still managed to survive, lingering quietly and eerily through this hollow galaxy. One of the few planets that had barely survived the destruction was purchased by Hedwig on the cheap due to its condition, building Hedwig's World of Wonders theme park on the planet's surface. But, of course, this happened to be a planet which housed three million damaged Cybermen who were transported there during the war, and patrons on the theme park were gradually kidnapped to be used as spare parts to repair these broken Cybermen. Following the arrival of the 11th Doctor, the Cybermen wanted to use him as their new Cyberplanner, but were defeated. The planet was eventually blown up, killing all of the Cyber Hybrids on the planet, with only one single Cybermite escaping. Following the destruction of the Tiberian Galaxy, the Cyber Wars were finally over although the aftermath and the remnants of the conflicts would live on for a very long time. By the end of the Cyber Wars, both humanity and the Cybermen had came to the edge of extinction. A few of the remaining humans did travel to the planet of the Boundary, living peacefully in the belief that the Cybermen were gone. But, as always, they somehow survived. Unbeknownst to the humans, a cyber carrier which was home to thousands of cyber warriors was laying dormant in the ruins of one of the final battles. And following the fall of the cyber empire, a partly converted cyberman named Ashad was hell-bent on resurrecting the cyberman species. And his first step into doing so was to acquire the Siberium. He had to travel into the past to find it, after it was sent back in time by the Alliance, a resistance force we previously mentioned who fought against the Cybermen. After acquiring the Siberium, he headed back to his own time. There he awoken thousands of Cyber Warriors from the dormant Cyber Carrier, believing this to be the dawn of his new Cyber Empire. Ashad then allied himself with the Master after landing his carrier on Gallifrey which was located on the other side of the boundary, but the Master betrayed Ashad so he could keep the Siberium to himself, using it for his own purposes and reawakening the Cyber Race for his own benefit, placing the bodies of the dead Time Lords within the Cyber Warrior armour, allowing them to have the ability to regenerate whenever they were killed. Despite Koshamas blowing up the Citadel and Gallifrey and its surroundings via the Death Particle, we are to believe that the Master and his new species of Cybermasters escaped. As you can gather, the Cyber Wars are an incredibly interesting group of conflicts which are intertwined within the Doctor Who timeline. They're spread across thousands of years and in many ways remind me of the Time War, due to the sheer number of battles, deaths, and sacrifices. What this especially highlights, though, is the Cybermen's constant willingness to somehow keep surviving. Because of how vast these wars were, there will be thousands, if not millions, of Cybermen still out there. 
Whether they're hidden beneath a planet or laying dormant in the ashes of a previous battle, they will always come back. And the most exciting aspect is that it's still not over. Despite the different variants of Cybermen and Cyber Groups and many different forms they've taken, the Cybermasters have to be the most dramatic and dangerous evolution of the Cybermen so far. And they for sure will be looking to reignite the Cyber Wars and fight on until there's a winner, if there ever will be a winner. The Earth Empire and the Cyber Empire have fought for thousands of years, and something tells me it's still not over. The Cybermasters will be back to threaten humanity again, and despite all of the lives that have been lost, all of the planets that have been destroyed, and all of the blood that's been shed, the Cyber Wars between them will go on, and on, and on. So guys, there is the story of the Cyber Wars. All of the conflicts rolled into one, put into the order the best I possibly could. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and as always with the story of documentaries, the aim is to just try and construct a timeline and a story as best possible. If there's anything I've missed, anything that you think is worth mentioning or adding, please let me know in the comment section below, and I'd be intrigued to see if anybody can put the two timelines between the Cybermen and the Cyber Wars together, that would be pretty impressive. But if you've enjoyed another episode of the stories, please hit the like button. Do please subscribe to this channel for much more. There are seven other episodes of the stories on the channel, which you can find in a playlist. Leave any comments that you've got regarding the video in the comment section below. And you can stay updated on everything that we do here on the channel, as well as announcements of what the next episode of the stories may be by heading over to our social media and our website. You can also donate to the channel on Patreon. And if you want to get involved in loads of Doctor Who discussions, we have a public Discord which is linked in the description of this video and we have multiple variants of different chats, albeit Doctor Who, Star Wars, New Who, Big Finish, you name it. We have a ton of chats on our Discord that you can take part in, as well as quizzes, watch-alongs, among everything else. It really is a cool place to be right now. Please do leave me some suggestions too on what you'd like the next episode to this, of the stories to be. But until the next one, thank you very much for listening once again, and I'll see you in the next episode.